got to the train station in Da Nang, and now we're heading we're heading uh, south to Nha Trang. So that'll be an experience. Ten hours on the train. All right, the train is here. I just got to find my uh, my coach. Here's my ticket. Train SE5 846, coach one, seat eight. This is all in Vietnamese, so it doesn't really tell me. So hopefully I can get a little bit of instruction of which which coach to go into, seat number eight. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna try to find somebody here to uh, ask about directions. Let's ask this guy right here. Excuse me. Here? Okay. All right, I made it. I made it. It's not too bad, got AC. It's pointing right at me. So, 10 hours. I'll be in, I'll be in a train at almost uh, 9 o'clock this evening. So, uh, let's see how it goes. dining cart I got probably another six hours or maybe four hours to go I'm gonna have a cold beer and some food it's Saturday morning in Nha Trang and it's quite a beautiful place from just a few minutes that I started walking this morning. I'm in this big plaza just down the street from the hotel. There's a uh, some kind of probably a government building right here. It's got a bunch of flags. Big massive hotel behind it. Uh, architecture is typical of a large city in, in Southeast Asia. Tall buildings, tall hotels. I just noticed, I just noticed on top of this hotel I'm gonna try to zoom it in. I'm not sure if my iPhone's gonna pick it up. Right there. Can you see where that is? That's a swimming pool. Yeah, and it's got a glass bottom, so when you swim in it, you're looking straight down. Probably not for the faint of heart. Pretty cool though. Um, lots of traffic. Here's the national flag flying, so it has to be some kind of a, I gotta look this up. It has to be some kind of a, um, landmark area and then behind me there is a, a beautiful looks like a lotus flower if you can tell right there it says welcome to not trying i'm going to look all that uh, all that up and see exactly what that is maybe once i start editing the video i'll do a commentary about these places i do have a little guidebook with me that <clears throat> i found at a hotel somebody left behind specifically for this area buffet barbecue this looks delicious that looks like octopus I think those are frog legs frog bodies I think more frogs over there uh, fish those are like the fins from the fish very cool I think they open at 10. I wonder how much it is. Wow. Walked up on some sort of a local market. I was gonna turn the other way, say, hey, you know what, I'm not done walking around yet. It just always happens like that. Just when I decide to uh, make another turn, I always come up somewhere cool. There's a butcher shop right over there. Boom. Selling chicken. Hopefully sell it quickly in this heat before it spoils. Always uh, worries me that when I eat somewhere, I'll eat something that's been tainted. So I always try to eat in a place where I see a lot of people and, and the turnover of the food is, is quick. It doesn't sit there. Beautiful fruit stand, vegetable stand. I'm gonna go inside. Selling chicken across chickens across the street. Boom. Got a rooster. 
And a beautiful display of fresh, fresh vegetables. I love these markets. And when you go inside, there's usually food stands that'll serve you fresh food. Right here, this this lady is selling eggs. You got looks like you got quail eggs, quail eggs. You got probably duck eggs over there. Wow, beautiful. Here you got your beef stand, and then you got your chicken stand separated. Boom. Here's a quick look at the inside of the market. And it just smells like a combination of seafood, vegetables, spices. Here we got a butcher stand. Parts of the pig, ribs. She's cutting up some pork chops. Looking good. There we go. Give me a big smile. <laughs> Look at the size of these shrimp. Wow. These things are big. Man, I wish I had a barbecue. And here, ladies and gentlemen, we have frogs. We have live frogs. Oh, guys, right there. All right, I'm gonna have to put a. I'm gonna have to put a advisory at the beginning of that video because those things are still alive when they. Oh man, I wish I didn't see that. Ah oh, shit. I'm wearing this, but I feel like I need to go to the hospital, man. I'm covered in welts. I've been difficulty breathing and a massive allergic reaction to something. I don't know if Benadryl is going to fix it. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> the doc's going to give me intravenous allergy medicine, antihistamine. I'm not really sure what's going on. Just kind of wanted to brush up on what happened. I had to go to the ER. Um, I had a really bad allergic reaction. I think what it was, I tried to back, kind of backtrack my my food intake and I don't think it was anything that was food related. I think it was the snake, snake vodka. Um, because I've never had any food allergies in my life and nothing that I've eaten was anything out of the ordinary, uh, including the shrimp. Um, I eat shrimp all the time, so uh, I'm thinking it was a snake vodka, uh, probably something within the snake that um, didn't agree with my body. All these koi. The fingers in there, they'll come to you. <laughs> you can touch them like little pets. Ay, 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 ay. Since I'm leaving Natrang tomorrow morning, I'm gonna do a just a quick brief review of of the city. Just kind of kind of tidbits if you're planning on traveling to Vietnam. A uh, very nice city. Uh, I would say that I preferred Da Nang versus Nha Trang. Uh, da Nang just seemed to have more of a beachy feel, even though it was a, it was, I wouldn't say a big city, but it had big buildings, big hotels. Um, not that Nha Trang is not interesting or pretty, 
Uh, there's a lot of Russians here, which again, it's not a big deal, but when I go to a foreign country, I want to see the foreign country. I don't necessarily am interested in seeing neighborhood after neighborhood, store after store being taken over by a different nation. Uh, and I get it, you know, I get it. There's, there's enclaves in the United States, China towns, Korean towns, and so forth. But that's more of a, just, that's more of a, um, a specialty thing. I, you know, when, when you go to, when you go to cities like LA or San Francisco, I hear that there's not other nations other than Russia that have their own uh, part of the town. So even though that's, you know, they're, they're super cool and I hung out with, uh, with, with a group of guys at their bar, the first night I got here, I had a great talk, great conversation. Uh, I prefer more of the local, lo uh, local uh, vibe. So having said that, it's it's um, not a big deal. Uh, also, the first day was sunny. The, s the next day started being overcast and it just, uh, it was rainy, but it is a rainy season in Da Nang. I got pretty much all sun. So that kind of lifted my spirits in terms of, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sunshine guy. I, I like the rain on very small occasions, but if it's warm rain, I don't mind it. Uh, I definitely am not a uh, I don't subscribe to wanting to live in uh, states like Oregon or Washington or any of the uh, upper mid upper uh, west coast. Uh, so, having said that, Natrang is is definitely a, a, a place to visit. I wouldn't say skip it. Uh, probably a couple of days. Uh, da Nang and Hoi An. I, although I didn't go to the Hoi An beach uh, because I didn't rent a scooter. Uh, there's a bunch of little islands and little it's a big delta so to get to it you gotta either take a car uh, or you gotta rent a, a motorbike which I didn't do I had plenty to see in the old town which which kept me entertained and, and that was that was good enough for me uh, Da Nang was the place to uh, kind of the beach town that I really enjoyed um, Hanoi absolutely I mean 100% don't skip Hanoi and then northern provinces that's I mean that's like I said before in the earlier part of the videos that's like being in a National Geographic seeing that seeing that um environment and the beauty of that of that region was just mind-blowing yeah okay heading back to try to find a place to eat tonight so i'm going to saigon tomorrow on a train that's about an eight and a half hour train and ride i think if i remember correctly uh, leaves at 10 gets there at six and uh probably spent two or three days in Saigon it's a big city so I'm not sure I'm not really a big city guy but it's you know it's Saigon you got to see it yeah it's like skipping going to the United States East Coast skipping New York right so you, you gotta you gotta see it so I'm gonna go there for a couple two three days and then I'm gonna head over to Cambodia and Phnom Penh I don't know if I need that many days in Phnom Penh. I might just, I don't know at this point yet. So I'm doing everything on the fly. I might fly home early. I kind of planned this you know, very efficiently because I gave myself a week in Phnom uh, in, in Cambodia, a week in Thailand, and Thailand is just requires more time than than a week because you're going to lose a couple of days just traveling. So so we're going to leave that for the next time. But uh, Natrang leaves me with a very, very good memory. I really enjoyed it here, despite the fact that, you know, YOLO, right? You, live, you only live once. I told myself I'll, I've always tried something once, regardless whether, I mean, I'm not gonna be stupid, jump off a mountain without a parachute, obviously, but, you know, uh, drinking snake vodka was not one of those stupid things was just more dangerous than anything else and I paid for it I think that's what it was but I tried it and uh, got it off my list so there you have it one thing I'm gonna say about not trying that the food is hit and miss and I don't mean bad like well partially um, when you look at because everything is in Vietnamese and Russian there's very few things that are in English which is fine they have pictures which is nice to have um, so you can kind of point at the food but when you're looking at the picture um, it's kind of like the movie Falling Down, I'm not sure if you've seen it. 
where he walks into the restaurant and looks at a burger and it's all nice and juicy and the cheese is melted off of it and he gets it and kind of has an altercation, which I didn't have, of course, but his disappointment in his eyes says, you know, what the hell is this? This does nothing like what I'm getting. So I, I'm sitting here at this restaurant, which I just walked across from, and another one I didn't feel like having a fog in. So I looked at the pictures, and there was a dish that was fried rice with all this meat around it. Okay, I'll have that. So um, I ordered it. Five minutes later, it comes. Nice and hot, but it looked nothing like it. The, the meat was like minced and maybe a couple of pieces that you can you have to like really sift through the rice. And I'm like, hey, what's this? You know, oh, that's your dish. Like, no, that doesn't look anything like it. No, 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 that's the same, same. I said, okay, no problem, I didn't argue. Took a couple bites, it tasted like shit. And uh, so I said, you know, I thank you. I, that's that's enough for me. She had this look in her eyes. I wasn't rude, I just, I just wasn't gonna have it. I'm sorry, you know, it, it's like, at least make it look close to what you're serving. But that's part of traveling. So I walked across the street and I ordered pho. It's kind of a sure thing. It's really, really good, but again, the meat, you know, what it looks in the picture, all this meat stacked on top, it's nothing like it. Maybe a eighth of the amount of meat, a couple of slices. Um, also, the noodles are not the uh, the white Vietnamese noodles. They're, they're like um, the, um, what do you call those, uh, um, ramen noodles that are in, in there, which is fine. I, I, I don't mind them, but it's definitely a better meal than across the street. So, long story short, be aware that what you're looking at in the pictures is not necessarily what you're going to get. Be prepared for it. You know, it's obviously not worth an argument. Um, it's, you know, just out of respect. Just if you don't like it, leave it, pay for it, and just walk away. But overall, the food everywhere else, especially Hanoi, Hajan, Da Nang, uh, was exceptional. Uh, here is definitely in a trend, hit and miss. I'm not sure it's because there's so many foreigners here whether i don't know i don't know why why there's a, such a disparity between the the quality and the amount of food that they serve you uh, but it is what it is so it's just another kind of check mark on the map of adventures for me through vietnam we'll see how saigon is